Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. It's been a big week for Bitcoin and crypto markets, but also world stock markets as well as the local housing market. So we're going to dive into all the headlines and try and paint a picture of where we are currently as a lot of people are asking, is that the bottom or is this just another bounce? So we've got a sea of green across the board this week for the first time in a few weeks, some big movers. Uh, a lot of people asking about Bitcoin Satoshi's vision. So we do have a few of our subscribers that are interested in, in this coin. And I'm going to talk about uh, why this is up big this week and why it's seeing some wild fluctuations as well. Before we dive into it all, I just want to thank all of you, our supporters. Um, you know, Since we started the channel, we made a decision about what sort of brand we want to be and what direction we want to take things. Uh, and it was great to be recognized for that and be appointed a, a board member of Blockchain Australia, where hopefully we can interface with government po possibly as soon as uh, next week, because I know they're interested in this sort of stuff and we need uh, friendly regulation if we don't want to see all that um, talent move away. On this day in Chris crypto history. So it was only last year that Bitcoin passed $10,000 for the first time as everyone was really excited about Bitcoin futures getting approved. Now, they were approved on the 18th of December and I remember that because that was my 30th birthday. And unfortunately, it's been nothing but downhill from there. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later in the video as well. Chinese capital controls, you know, they're cracking down on how people are getting money out of the country into things like housing, which we're going to talk about. Uh, PayPal, uh, chop, you know, they definitely chopped and changed their opinion towards Bitcoin, um, adopting it in 2014 and then saying that using it for certain top-ups is illegal back in 2015. But it was 2013 where Bitcoin really had its first um, price surge that made the news headlines from $120 all the way up to $1,200 in only two months. And it did peak out uh, this time of the year in 2013. And back in 2012 was that first ever block reward reduction where it goes down every four years, um, the amount of Bitcoins that the miners get for solving and adding each block. One thing I did want to just touch on was the assistance and access bill, a lot of you are aware of this, but it could effectively end a lot of encryption and, and privacy of your data and a lot of the apps you use and so on. And this has been trying to be pushed through hurriedly in the Senate before Christmas. Um, a lot of you want to support whatever we can do. And we did get news this week that Labor have pushed back a bit. So it doesn't look like this is going to go ahead at least before Christmas. Um, We'll keep an eye on this. We'll, maybe we'll start a petition. Who knows? But a lot of people come out and say that this is just a really terrible idea, um, not only to end encryption, but a number of things the Australian government are trying to do. You know, um, MyGov, that, that health database. And these are the sort of things that can happen. The Marriott Hotel had all this data, passports, credit card, personal data, 500 million guests. Now, this data was all encrypted, supposedly with you know multi-sig technology. They don't know how it's been cracked, but this has all been leaked. And this is what worries me could happen with MyGov and these centralized, supposedly encrypted um, you know, storage of our, of our data. So obviously, um, we like having control of our own personal information and just be very wary of this, guys. The housing market now. So lending growth has dropped to a record low. And this is for investors, which comprised a huge percentage of the market, larger than any other country in the world. We have so many punters that own multiple properties in Australia. Um, if prices go down, they can use negative gearing and so on. So we're going to have Martin North back on the channel very soon because I know this stuff does interest you guys. But the flip side of that, I've had a few people point out that there's certain pockets and you know more rural regions which are still bullish they're still going up not every house in australia is going to go down in value there's just like the stock market even if the stock market has big corrections there can still be individual stocks that perform well but i think this general rule of thumb that housing only ever goes up it's going to become the exception rather than the rule that it's been for 50 years now Speaking of housing markets, these Chinese fentanyl uh, drug runners, if you don't know what fentanyl is, it's another opioid um, drug that's widely abused now as an alternative to heroin, laundering $5 billion through the housing market. So the housing market has become a tool 
for these drug syndicates or even just investors to get money out of countries and you know launder that money. So when this all unwinds, um, this can be another factor that has contributed to high housing prices in, in some areas of the world. US debt, we speak about this a lot on the channel and it's one of the reasons I remain ultra bullish on Bitcoin long term as an alternative to fiat money. The US now is spending somewhere between one half and two billion dollars every day just to make interest payments. So that's not how much they need to spend or are spending to pay down their debt. This is only the amount that they are spending to try and pay down the interest on that debt. Now, yes, this is as crazy as it seems, guys. Every year, you know, this is getting up towards a trillion dollars a year that they're spending just to try and keep the interest down on their debt, which is now surpassed $20 trillion. So those numbers all start with a T. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is just a drop in the ocean with its market cap around 100 to 200 billion at this stage. And we certainly think it's going to capture a percentage of these markets. Check out my three-part series about can Bitcoin reach $1 million long-term uh, if you haven't already. Now, a few weeks ago, we spoke about the stock market. It's having this big tantrum. We spoke about interest rates being raised too quickly and all the debt in the world. They don't want to pay more interest. We just looked at those numbers. The higher we raise rates, the more they have to pay. And I spoke about the only way that stock markets will rebound and stop this correction is when the cheerleaders at the Federal Reserve come out and say, hey guys, maybe we won't, won't raise interest rates as, as quickly. And this is exactly what happened this week. So we also had some fears subside about the trade wars with Donald Trump and China. But it was these two words that the new Fed chairman has come out and said that, look, we're just below where we want to be. And in the past, he said we're a long way from neutral historic interest rates of you know above 3%. So this is another example where everyone thought that maybe he'll be different to Janet Yellen or, or Ben Bernanke or Alan Greenspan. Uh, and this saying of, of the power put, the put, a put is an option below the market um, that investors use as insurance, I guess you can think of it as against markets falling. And this is the first time that they've seen Chairman Powell come out and say, don't worry guys, we'll save you, maybe we won't raise it. So I think we're going to see extremely bullish market action on, on Monday morning. And depending on where crypto markets are, that could help Bitcoin. We saw when the markets had that real big bloodbath and Bitcoin followed down. If we have a huge day on Monday in world stock markets, it could be another thing that can actually help Bitcoin continue higher. This was a great article by a friend of the channel, Alex. I recommend you read this. And he talks about all the, the borrowing and our blind excess, how much emphasis we've put on material possessions. I can tell you right now, guys, that is not what is going to make you happy. Meditation, meaningful relationships, family, all those sort of things, guys, that money can't buy is what I found very early on is what is going to drive true happiness. And, and money has never been something that has been an aim or necessarily you know, an important factor for me um, when making life decisions. Okay, into the crypto news. So Amazon has launched services for helping build blockchains. We know that they're interested in Ethereum, Hyperledger, um, Qtum is another one. And they're just building out this range of products to help people build on, on top of blockchains. It's all great for mainstream adoption. We know Microsoft have also been very bullish on blockchain. Um, partnering with some startups to increase blockchain uptake in, in Japan. This week, we also saw a Mesa Go present on stage at No Tokyo Japan. You guys know that I'm very bullish on a Mesa Go. They've partnered with Tata Taxi Ride uh, last week or so. I believe they're going to partner with a number of companies throughout Asia. When Plasma and that scaling solution gets released, I'm just, I'm just so uh, excited about what a Mesa Go are doing long term. And it's one that I don't really see getting hyped a lot. And when you can. When they move to proof of stake in the future, um, you can earn rewards by locking up your coins. There's so many things in its favor. Um, and, and it's one that I didn't think would get this low like the whole market, guys. I'll admit I have been wrong. Prices have gone lower for longer than, than what I thought. Um, but I'm certainly dollar cost averaging into projects like Amisa Go. Now, this week, Zcash did get listed on Coinbase. And when BAT got listed a month ago, I did post to members that next up, in my opinion, is Zcash. Now, why is that? I think so many people have been focused on 
you know, stellar lumens in particular, maybe Cardano as well is an, an, a second hot favorite, but it's already priced in. And Coinbase, I don't think they like the fact that when they announce it, it hasn't led to these pumps um, or a lot of excitement that it generally has. So I thought Zcash was one that was less predicted by the market. It's not priced in. And that's what I'm looking for. And it's another reason I'm leaning towards a few other projects rather than what the market is expecting. So I actually think that, yes, the usual ones that I've come out and spoken about, they will get listed sometime over the next few months. But I'm looking for those ones that aren't priced in so that if they get listed, A, I make money, whether it's trading or, or investing. Now, in 2016, Brian Armstrong spoke about how bullish he is on Ethereum in general. Uh, how he likes a lot of the Ethereum projects that aren't spoken about a lot now. So Digex DAO, the Goldback token, uh, Olga, the REP token and their prediction markets, and things like Amisa Go. They're the kind of projects that have been around for a few years now, really focused on actually building their working product out. Um, and I think that is going a bit unnoticed by the market. So that's where I'm uh, placing my bets as well as the, you know, the well-known coins they've spoken about. This was a great article about Ethereum 1.0. So everyone's talking about Ethereum 2.0 now and when we move to um, proof of stake and um, sharding and all these other sort of planned scaling upgrades. But there's some things that we can do in the short term that might happen a lot sooner than everyone's thinking that can still give us reasonable scaling, even to the tune of, of 10x. So similar to how Bitcoin implemented SegWit, for example, it's a soft fork. It wasn't a hard fork. Now that gave Bitcoin some degree of scaling by removing that, that witness data from the blocks. And I don't want to make this a technical video, but by doing things like pruning the size of the blockchain, um, you know, changing a few little tweaks here and there, we can get some, some pretty good radical scaling to make Bitcoin more user-friendly, faster, uh, more efficient, and so on, without having to wait until 2019 or, or late 2020 and so on, when a lot of these real big upgrades are being talked about. Here's a pretty cool website someone shared with me, uh, mikemcdonald.github.io. And this is showing the amount of Ethereum that is locked up in different contracts, like the maker contract I spoke about last week, uh, has a significant amount, 1% of all Ethereum locked up and we we saw the price at which a lot of that would get liquidated. So check out this website, have a play around with Maker. Um, yeah, Augur's starting to gain in popularity. So this is great to see how much Ethereum is locked up in these different projects. A project I had on this week was Ethereum Naming Service and I'll do a tutorial this week about how you can lock down your .eth address. So similar to people buying up domain names in the early stages of the internet, I believe buying the .eth addresses are going to be very valuable. So check out that interview if you haven't already with Nick Johnson and I'll do a tutorial on how you can lock down your .eth address. Into the Bitcoin news. so. A lot of you probably saw this on Twitter or social media. I had a few people message me really worried saying, hey, Satoshi has put out a message for the first time in a number of years. So his P2P profile hadn't been touched for a while and he, he put out this message, um, Noir, which means uh, light or uh, I, know, I don't know if he's getting at hey, I'm shedding light on this situation. There's so many conspiracies about what this means, um, you know, in Arabic and other terms and so on. But I just want you guys to know that Satoshi's email account did get hacked in 2014. There's been fake messages coming out and we know Craig has claimed to be Satoshi. You guys know my uh, stance on this that why why beat around the bush and dance around this topic if he is Satoshi, um, sign that Genesis block or a transaction and put all the critics to rest and silence them all at once if that's true. But all this you know, these actions he's taking to scare the market and, and try and prove it. Um, it's, just, it's just not something that I think is any good for crypto at the moment. And this had a negative influence on the market, maybe a bit of a knee-jerk reaction, but because he's cried wolf so many times, um, the impact is becoming less and less in the future. So nothing to worry about at this stage. Now, people talking me, asking me to talk about the price of Bitcoin Satoshi's vision the reason that I haven't covered it a lot yet is because Bitcoin Gold was number four or five by market cap at one stage. 
and everyone gets really excited when these new hard forks are done. But the fact is, it's very difficult for people to claim their coins or the wallets aren't out yet. Exchanges haven't started accepting deposits and withdrawals. And what we see is that there's very few coins out there for the people that want to sell or even buy, you know, to take the other side of this argument. But the fact is that you can expect volatility. So this went from $480 down to $100, then back up to over $450. And that is traders pushing it around. It's thinly thinly traded with low liquidity. And it takes a while for the market to settle down and find an equilibrium. Now, yes, the entire market decreased as well. But from $480 down to $20, guys, we need to take time to see price to reach an equilibrium. Now, I will cover it in the future if they have any... Um, you know, big news announcements like everything. But let's not get too excited short term when a new hard fork is listed because until people can buy, sell and trade their coins on liquid markets with easy to use wallets, the price can sometimes be a false representation of where the project is. Not only that, but as Bitcoin Gold experience, these hard forks are prone to... 51% uh, attacks. They've got such low hash rate now compared to Bitcoin um, that they're definitely in jeopardy of that. Now, replay projection has been added. Um, we've seen a truce that enter the hash wars. Bitcoin ABC have got checkpoints so that they can't be replayed attacked. So yeah, at the moment, we're waiting for the dust to settle and for the time being, I'm quite happy to say that the majority, the worst of the hash wars is definitely behind us and we touched on that last week. On to some really bullish news now, guys. So this article, 81,000 views so far, trade of the decade, betting on Bitcoin. Make sure you have a read of this if you haven't already, guys. This is on Forbes. We know that this is a widely read news website. All the reasons that we have touched on on the channel in the past, you know, debt, I'm not even going to go into the number of reasons that I'm bullish on Bitcoin, but they're all being addressed in this article. And this is the first time that maybe some readers of Forbes or these mainstream sites have had an article that is this bullish on Bitcoin. And isn't it funny that after these big corrections that we start to see, maybe once they're happy with how much they've accumulated, these bullish articles start to come out. So another thing that we're keeping our eye on. On to the Bitcoin ETF. SEC Chairman um, Jay Clayton came out and said that there needs to be some more changes and he's still worried about Bitcoin price volatility and manipulation. Now, Van Eck and the guys over at SIBO are doing everything they can to try and put the case forward that, hey, this is no more subject to manipulation than silver market rigging that traders have pled guilty to, you know, oil supply and demand, everything is subject to some degree of manipulation or volatility. So look, that's a fantastic effort by these guys to try and push forward with all this. Um, it's a 63 page read. I am gonna read that. Maybe I'll do a summary for you guys about what happened at the meeting in the notes, uh, but very exciting. NASDAQ have spoken about launching their futures as well. At the start of the video, we saw that Bitcoin futures have only led to uh, lower prices. So I'm not sure whether we're excited about this or not, but I guess you can say that, hey, this is just making Bitcoin legitimate. It's here to stay if something as big as the NASDAQ wants to launch those Bitcoin futures. Coinbase also launched their OTC trading desk this month. Um, everyone wants to have an OTC trading desk. We hear about the volumes that are getting accumulated behind the scenes. Look, I'm not going to talk about this too much. We'll have Prash on again in future from Calvin Brown to talk about how that all works. And we've covered it in detail before. This article I thought was interesting because the US government have come out and said that we're blacklisting two Bitcoin addresses. Now, the US government do like to act as the world police, but really, as the article says here, what are they What are they going to do? They're powerless. These Bitcoin addresses can send to another Bitcoin address. Um, you know, they can send out little transactions. They can send it to a decentralized exchange or trade it with someone else mix their coins. There's so many ways around this that you can't just rubber stamp two addresses and say, hey, these are banned and reinforce it in a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. So let's see what comes of all this. I'm sure there's going to be more hoo-ha in the future, but
but at the moment I think this is um, a lot of a lot of shouting um, that can't really be enforced. Now I tweeted about this article that 80% of Bitcoin mining comes from renewable sources. A few people are saying you know this article is just completely inaccurate so I do want to read it in detail if you have let me know your thoughts guys did they cherry pick data um, but their paper that they've done does suggest that a lot of this Bitcoin mining particularly in China does come from these hydro dams um, renewable sources and when we compare that to other countries other industries there's not many that can claim uh, that they're renewable that higher um, percentage renewable other than maybe a few of the northern European countries which are doing a great job with their renewable energy um, mandates and targets Finally, a pretty cool website that someone shared with me, vcdepth.io. This does show you the total market depth combined from all different exchanges to get an idea of the buy and sell pressure. So previously, there was a lot more sell pressure. Whether or not this means that we're coming to an end as well, we see more buy pressure on things like Ethereum compared to sell pressure. Um, you know, something like EOS is interesting because of all the block producers and all the people in the community uh, getting paid with EOS. And now that's the same case with ICOs raising in F that may be forced to sell in the future. Um, this might be worthy of an entire episode about all the factors that are causing this buy and sell pressure. Either way, a good resource um, to keep your eye on. Okay, so on to price. I'm going to start off with on the Coinbase exchange. A lot of you guys are using these USD exchanges while Tether had lost its peg. But last week, we were looking for that capitulation to happen on November 25th. If we can get our cycle brackets up there and we're looking for this push up to start. Now, where are we currently? Well, we're right at resistance on the daily. Uh, we'll run into these moving averages, the 12 and 26 period. On the four hour, we're right at support if we zoom in. So right between support and resistance, I hate it when it's sort of saying, you know, we could go up or down. But this was acting as resistance and continue to bounce into it and being rejected. And we have seen a strong move up. I've got lines going everywhere on my Bitfinex trading chart. But that's because they have been obeying these levels. And last night, I did a video for members. Uh, we were watching this breakout and trading it live. Uh, we were speaking about the number of shorts and they continue to increase in the face of this bullish rally. So let's just zoom out to the daily and see that they got up above six, uh, 36,000. These are the people that are making bets that Bitcoin is going to go down and they continue to double down on their bets as Bitcoin has been increasing in price. And that's when we can see the things um, see things like a short squeeze. So some people are saying that the longs are also high. Definitely not as relatively high compared to the shorts, but let's just zoom back in there. Um, and this is what we start to see last night where we get a big move. They've been acting as resistance. They turn into support and we have this big breakout. We get to these next previous levels of support and resistance. Um, and these big moves are a result of this short squeeze. So I did draw this yellow channel on when price was back here during that live video last night for members. And at the moment, this is all good action. We're just cooling off, letting these moving averages catch up. And now we're waiting to see if on the hourly time frame and the four hour time frame, this can act as strong enough support to break through those moving averages on the daily time frame. Now, other coins are giving us some mixed signals. You know, if we look at the weekly chart, there's just enormous volume coming in on Ethereum and some of these other altcoins. Uh, it, it's a positive sign. We haven't really seen this throughout the year on a lot of coins. So to see this increase now, it is a positive, but you know, I'm very tentative. You know, I don't want to definitely say that the bottom's in. We, we don't know. Emotions and news articles can turn on a dime. If the ETF's rejected or backed is delayed again, if there's a big hack, we know how emotional these markets are in the short term. So that's what I'm watching. I'm taking it one day at a time. I'm watching these smaller time frames. I'm looking for volume. I'm looking for the moving averages. I'm collecting evidence. But what we really need, guys, is a, is a bullish close uh, above around 4,300, 4,400 on the daily and to have a good volume green week. There's a day left. Uh, 
in this weekly candlestick to get this volume up here. But until the bullish volume surpasses this bearish volume we've seen during the sell-offs, we have to remain calm and unemotional because we can visit lower levels. Finally, I just want to uh, leave you that there's plenty of signs the bull market has returned. This was a great um, funny article here about this about this cow or bull, whatever you want to uh, label it as there, guys. But uh, I know a few of you enjoyed this. So, look, crypto can be emotional. It can be stressful, guys. Um, you know, don't put your heart and soul into this. There's more to life, as we touched on at the start of the video. You've got to be able to laugh at whatever direction the market goes. So thanks for tuning in. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share these videos around, and we'll talk again soon. Cheers.